Meanwhile, the Louisiana governor uh, and potential Republican presidential contender, Bobby Jindal, he's been in London today speaking out about Islamic extremism. Uh, Bobby Jindal spoke about claims that Muslim immigrants have created what he calls the so-called go zones across Europe. Places where Sharia law rules and non-Muslims aren't allowed. Uh, according to one online copy of the speech, uh, the governor said this, and I'm quoting, In the West, non-assimilationist Muslims establish enclaves and carry out as much of Sharia law as they can without regard for the laws of the democratic countries which provided them a new home. It is startling to think that any country would allow, even unofficially, for a so-called no-go zone. The governor, Bobby Jindal, is joining us now live from London. Uh, governor, thank Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, I don't know if you realize your remarks are creating a lot of criticism out here. Some are calling it, at least the Council on American Islamic Relations, hate mongering. Explain exactly what you're, you're trying to tell all of us when you're describing these so called no go zones. Absolutely. Well, look, I knew by speaking the truth, we're going to make people upset. Even today in the Daily Mail, you had a local police chief admit that there are no go zones here in London. Here's the bigger point. Radical Islamists hate our values. They threaten our way of life. They don't appreciate, they don't condone, they don't allow freedom of expression, self-determination. Anybody that thinks that you should be killed for drawing a cartoon, obviously, it does not, it is a terrorist, it is somebody that we need to hunt down, that we need to get rid of in our societies. The huge issue, the big issue with non-assimilation, the fact that you've got people that want to come to our country but not adopt our values, in some cases not adopt our language, in some cases want to set apart their own enclaves and continue to, to, to hold on to their own values, I think that's dangerous. I think it's dangerous in America. I think it's dangerous in Europe. It used to be, it used to be normal to call America the great melting pot. Now, because of political correctness, some people think that it's cultural arrogance or it's colonial somehow to insist that people that want to come to America should be Americans, should want to be Americans, should share our, our commitment to the freedom of religious liberty freedom of expression, the right to self-determination. So my point is we've got a huge challenge in those that don't want to assimilate, don't want to integrate. Quite frankly, we have a right as a country to say, if you want to come to America to be an American and pursue the American dream and enjoy freedom and opportunity, we welcome you. No, However, you, if you don't, we don't want you in our country. You know, but you're not saying there are no-go zones in the United States. What you're suggesting, there are these so-called no-go zones in, in the United Kingdom, where you are right now. And a lot of people are pressing you uh, on this, Governor. Where are those no-go zones? What specific locations are you talking about? No, exa you're exactly right, Wolf. Look, again, you had a police chief here in London today say to the Daily Mail, there are absolutely neighborhoods. I'm not talking about entire cities, as others have tried to suggest. I'm saying there are neighborhoods where the police say they don't go as frequently. There are neighborhoods where women do not feel comfortable walking without veils. And you're right. No, we, we don't see that in America. We wouldn't tolerate that in America. But in America, if we continue to allow folks to come in without insisting on ass assimilation, on integration, this is what lies in our future. And what I worry about in America is become politically correct to say that, well, that's just a religious difference. This is not a religious difference. We need Muslim leaders to stand up and denounce these radical Islamists and say that not only, not only condemning the violence, condemning these individuals and saying these are not martyrs. They're not going to enjoy a reward in the afterlife, but rather they're going straight to hell. That somebody that uses military tactics to kill innocent civilians, women, children, men at their place of work, in their residences, simply because they drew a cartoon or for other offenses, they, we need Muslim leaders to condemn these individuals, not just the acts of violence, but these individuals make it clear that these aren't martyrs. But are these neighborhoods that you're talking about, these so-called no-go zones, are they in London? Are they in Birmingham? Are they in other cities? Have you spoken to uh, British law enforcement about this? What are they saying to you? Sir, oh, sir, look, I've heard all we have met with elected officials and others, and again, a, a, a British uh, police official, a local police chief, has made these comments in the local press. It's not a surprise to folks here that there absolutely are areas where the police are less likely to go. There are areas where women feel like they have to wear veils. but. 
But, Wolf, again, I think my critics are missing the bigger point. The bigger point is that radical Islam is absolutely a threat to our way of life. This is a group that we must hunt down and kill. And secondly, we need to promote assimilation and integration. It's no longer acceptable simply. And by, by doing this, I'm talking about, for example, how we educate our children about American exceptionalism. I'm talking about insisting on English. I'm talking about insisting on adherence to our values. Sharia law is completely incompatible with Western notions of self-determination, of equality, of human dignity. It's not just another way of looking at the world. It's completely incompatible. And we need to, ra uh, we need to recognize radical Islam for the, the real threat that it is. In your home state of Louisiana, have Muslims been appropriately assimilated, Muslim immigrants who have come to Louisiana? Look, in my home state of Louisiana, in many places, we passed uh, outright bans on Sharia law. And, and, Wolf, what I'm saying is across America, we are beginning to lose our way. You hear people say, for example, we're not a melting pot, now we're a salad bowl. You've heard in America academic elites and, and liberals and the left say, hey, it's arrogant to insist people learn English, learn our values. This is just another way, uh, an equally valid way. Well, that's nonsense. When my parents came to Louisiana over 40 years ago, they came so they could be Americans. They love India. They love our heritage. But they didn't want us to be growing up Indians. If we were, we would have stayed in India. Instead, they said, you are Americans, not hyphenated Americans. Another thing I said today was, we don't need to be calling ourselves Irish Americans, Indian Americans, African Americans. We're all American. And that is extremely important. I think immigration shouldn't be done based on race, color, or nonsensical divisions. It should be based on if people want to pursue freedom and opportunity, work hard, get a great education, enjoy that freedom that our parents left for us, that should be how we determine who we let in and who we don't let in. So it used to be acceptable to talk about the American dream, American exceptionalism, Western values. What I fear is political correctness is driving us to pretend like these differences don't matter. And that's, it's, it's equally acceptable to adopt Sharia law. It's equally acceptable to reject these notions of what our Judeo-Christian heritage that have made us so unique, so successful, and continue to allow us to make our own decisions about how to lead our lives. But, uh, uh, Governor, we can all be proud of, of America, proud to be Americans, but we can also be proud of our ethnic heritage, right? Yes, I'll be saying, you know... Uh, oh, absolutely. And I'm saying people should absolutely embrace our ethnic heritage. Look, America is a majority Christian country, but there's no penalty, and there shouldn't be, for those who have different faiths or those who are of no faith. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with being proud of our heritage, but we're Americans. And the reason we came here is we knew this was a special place, a unique place, and we should insist on those that come into our country. What worries me is we have second, third, fourth generation uh, immigrants who now identify themselves in another country or in their own cultural group. They either want to change our culture or set up their own culture. And it is a bigger problem, to be fair. It is a bigger problem in Europe. But if we're not careful, we're going to see those same challenges in America as well. And that's what worries me, this political correctness, and especially among the left, that seems to want to insist that there's nothing unique or special about America, or that it is arrogant to insist that people coming to our country share our values, share our language, and understand they're coming to be American. They're not coming to change our country to look more like what they want, which involves Sharia law, the unequal treatment of, the, the, of women, and other types of, of, of oppression. So I just want to be precise, Governor. You're not backing at all away from your comments about there being various so-called no-go zones in the United Kingdom. Not at all. And I'm also making a bigger and maybe even more controversial point that radical Islam is a grave threat. We need Muslim leaders to denounce the individuals, not just the acts of violence, and also that it is absolutely correct to insist on assimilation, insist that people coming in our society and our country adopt our values, adopt our language, and understand they're coming to become Americans, or in here in this case, coming to become uh, the citizens of the UK, coming to be Europeans. And I think that assimilation, that integration is so important if we want to prevent those lone wolves and to protect our society against this threat. Do you want to be uh, president uh, of the United States, uh, Governor? Well, if we're continuing to think and pray about it, we'll make that decision in the next few months. I think this country needs big change. I think that the, the preeminent issue in this election is going to be restoring the American dream for our children and grandchildren. It's becoming harder and harder for our kids to enjoy and become part of the middle class through hard work and a great education. I think this president's tried to make the American dream about redistribution and government dependence, not hard work and effort and opportunity. I think folks are looking for an outsider outside of D.C. I think voters are looking, I think, for a governor with executive branch experience. So we are thinking and praying about it very seriously. We'll make that decision soon.
Governor Bobby Jindal, thanks very much for joining us.